Blog Talk Radio. Just close your eyes and think of how it used to be. Like when you heard your favorite song, you had to get up and move your feet. Cause it felt good down in your soul, you had to let everybody know that that's the jam y'all don't understand. Grab your lady's hand, pull her clothes and dance. Can we go back? We happy it's a weekend We're getting ready to hit the spot I'm looking extra fly You're looking extra high Four to five when we hit the door
You're listening live to On The Move Unscripted with your host, Patricia M. Goins and Mr. Stout on www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Patricia Goins. Call in now. We're live at 516-387-1247. What's going on? I got to like yeah. this for everything. Right? What's going on? You have tuned in to another episode of On the Move Unscripted with Patricia M. Going and Mr. Stout. We were going. I almost doing? forgot what the heck to say. Like I ain't said that. Let me say that again because that felt good. What's going on? Like that felt good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it has been a minute since we've uh, been on the air, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, well, there's been some things that have been going down, and some new stuff, and you know, breaking. Right. You know? Yeah. Um. So, gosh, when was the last time we were on? Let's start there. I, we did interview someone last time we was on. <laughs> There's <laughs> been a lot of stuff going on in the world. We ain't gonna talk about the coke in the White House. That we're not gonna talk about that because oh, that's that. something. Look at here, Jack. <laughs> I don't like have no smack in my house. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna talk about the coke they found in the White House. And you know, oh gosh, you know, the, see what I've been telling y'all about this epidemic. Even the White House, <laughs> the guy here, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, this fentanyl thing is real. This cocaine thing is real. This meth thing is real. Like, I'm in that treatment center. So it doesn't surprise me that it found its way to the wild. You know, Probably we don't even know if it started there. It always is. It always is. Somebody just found these, they dropped their pack. That's not what happened. <laughs> like. But it has been a while. So we did On the Move Unscripted, um, I don't know, I think it was May, maybe April. I think I was on my May. way to L.A. Yeah. Right? So I went out to L.A., met Lady Crystal. Mm-hmm. We have an awesome um, music video that we did on, uh, that I have on YouTube. Yeah. So you can go to my YouTube page, which is Miss Goings 1119. Um, had the Mother's Day uh, bash here in Columbus, Ohio, yep. Mother's Day uh, dinner and music gala. Mm-hmm. Um doing a lot, a lot has been going on in the world. What, 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 about, what can you think of that, you know, that we have missed? Um, it was a, a few things that was going on. Well, we know that uh, a situation that would happen with the whole gun thing that's going on, um, and the submarine thing that just happened as well. What um, submarine thing? It was, uh, it was going for the Titanic. Huh? It was the people who perished going to, to go look at the Titanic, and the submarine it exploded. They were they, they was on their way to women. They were in a submarine. They were in a submarine on their way to see the old Titanic. Yeah. To that spot. Yeah. And it, and it exploded. Yeah. No, I didn't hear about that. Yeah. I knew you were saying something, but you know I've been working. I didn't get a chance Titanic. to check out. It, it was a couple things that was happening. You know, like a refugee boat. I think somewhere out. In, it was going headed to Italy. Those people, uh, you know, were in a situation where people died and stuff like that. There's a few things going on with that right now. Yeah, and the police is still not letting up, so we're still hearing stories about that kind of stuff. So, and then they try to impeach uh, Biden. I heard about that too. So. Well, I know. <laughs> so whatever's going on in the world. Y'all trying to impeach Biden? <laughs> yeah. Y'all got y'all nerve when y'all had Trump in there. We didn't try, been trying to kick him out. We still trying. To... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How much stuff they got on Trump? I swear to goodness, can they fight? And he still is the, whatever. Like you said, I can go out there on Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and nothing will happen. That's really starting to make me worried because I swear to goodness, how many other presidents can get away with flushing stuff down the door? <laughs> I, I don't know. They trying to impeach Biden. All that stuff that Trump did, that don't mean that impeachment don't yet. Hey. It don't seem like it means nothing because right. you can get they impeached Trump twice and you know got him on trial and put him in jail. And got he got back out and like whatever. Why are they doing that? Because they found some coke. I don't I don't I don't know. It's always fun. Something will happen with his this um, information with Hunter Biden or something like that. I don't I don't know the full gist of it. Most people probably out there know what um what's going on with it more than I, than I do. You know I just see that they I also was trying to. Uh, I think they they might have eradicated affirmative action as well. Oh my gosh, I don't understand what is going on with the world. Oh my goodness, it's too much. I can't even. Y'all, 
all that work. Yeah. All that work that I uh, that the those in the sixties and fifties mm-hmm. and seventies and eighties and nine all that work for y'all to get up there with them. Mm-hmm. The Supreme Court was like, yep. Yeah, so it's so, a Supreme Court idiots. Yeah, <laughs> just, everything just, down. And the loans. And the loans. So now they're not going to honor the twenty thousand dollar or ten thousand dollar, you know, debt debt cancellation. Oh, for college yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh. That's pretty who put them in office? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you you serious? Y'all, they raised the prices of every freaking thing. We done lost so many people to the pandemic and all that kind of stuff. Y'all couldn't give us twenty thousand dollars off. Right. Ten thousand dollars off. Oh my god. But anyway, we back, y'all. Yeah. It's been a minute. You know what I'm saying? It's been a minute. We been, we took a little break. I had to take a mental break. I ain't gonna lie. I it was a lot going on. I had to take a break. And Mr. Scott was like, whenever you ready, babe. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate mm-hmm. that because I had to take a mental break. I had to tell everybody to kiss my tail. I had to take a, I, I took, I got off of social media for a while. Yeah. Like, I had to take a break. Sometimes you got to do that and then recalculate, replan, and think things out and come back. So, um, so I'm so excited about the guest that we have coming on to, uh, oh, yeah. tonight. Mm-hmm. I actually met him on one of the sites. So I'm trying to remember which site it was. Um, to hire, I was looking for a videographer um, for the Mother's Day uh, dinner and music gala mm-hmm. in here in Columbus, Ohio. I, was look, I knew that I wanted to film, and so I just was looking, and he came across, and I'm so excited because he was very professional, him and his team, and I just really wanted to give him some love. I wanted him to shout out and talk about who he is, where he's at, how he got into it, like the whole thing. Okay, so, yeah. Go ahead and, um, I think we might have him up in him. Right. Uh, Alrighty. righty. D'Angelo, are you on the line? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Hello? Yes, sir. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear y'all. Well, excited to have you. Excited to have you. Um, Can you hear us clearly? Yeah, I can hear y'all clearly. Awesome and amazing. So we are so happy to... um, you know, first and foremost, I'm so excited that I took a, a chance. And what was the site I went on? I can't even remember the site. What was the site that I went on to find? Uh, it was Upwork, I believe. Upwork. I remember. Upwork, right. And I wasn't sure how to – I had never used Upwork. Mm-hmm. I had used Fiverr okay, before, yeah, but I had right. never used Upwork. Mm-hmm. So I, and I've used, you know, Craigslist. But, you yeah. know, they, they got stalkers and killers on Craigslist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I've been hearing, so I had to take a break from it. I don't know who, what's going on with Craigslist. I don't know. So I, I wanted to try something different. And so um, up, Upwork, um, I found Mr. D'Angelo, and I'm really excited. So you did such an awesome job yeah. as the videographer. Thank you. And even the way you did the editing that I wanted to bring you on. And I wanted to find, I wanted to peep your brain a little bit. Peep, is it peep or peep? Peep. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to tap in and just find out like when did you like really just take you down the yellow brick road. We yeah. take all the guests down the yellow brick road and find out like what made you want to become a videographer, you know, wh- who inspired you and just just give us tell us where you're from. Just you know, you got the floor. Okay. Uh so I was born in Chicago. Uh grew up in a small town in Middletown, Ohio. Uh, I was really into sports at a really young age, uh, played basketball, played football, ran a little bit of track. And, uh, you know, I wasn't the best athlete. I wasn't the fast and strong and taller. So kind of um, at the end of my high school years, um, I got really into uh, sports broadcasting. But I just felt like when I had went off to college, I went to Xavier for a little bit. And um, I just felt like broadcasting was just a little too political for me. So mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to tell my own story and, I found just picking up a camera and kind of telling my story behind the camera. Um, So a little bit after high school, I dropped out of Xavier. uh, And then I went off to L.A. I lived in L.A. for about two two to three years. And I met some good people, learned a lot of stuff. And I had a mentor out there that was really, really good. Shout out to Josh. Um, He taught me a lot of things. He was really hard on me, but um, it kind of made me just appreciate 
things a lot more in the industry. And uh, I'm just grateful to, to meet and connect with new people uh, and to be able to network and still be able to do the be able to do what I love to do. So you was out in L.A. Okay, I just came from L.A. in uh, March. Was it mm-hmm. March? Yeah. <clears throat> how, how how did you like living there? Uh, I think for me it was a love hate relationship because I was working all the time. Like I I constantly worked, and it was it's because I had I had bills to pay. You know, it's expensive in L.A. So I I love the work the work ethic of it and the grind of it, but, you know, I'm I'm only 24, so, you know, the fun time and the partying and all that stuff, I really get to do that much, so I kind of miss out on a little bit of that. But I understand because, you know, you got to make sacrifices for things that you want to do. But, you know, it, it was just, it was a lot taking a toll on my mental. And so, you know, that's why I came back to Ohio, kind of just to work on my mental health, but also, you know, kind of uh, perfect my craft a little bit more. And, uh, you know, I don't regret the decision I made. I love um, I love being back home, but I mean I'm not gonna be here for long. Um, but um, no, nah, LA was LA was fun. I had a good time in LA. Oh yeah. Feel- Come with us to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I can imagine. So when you said you worked a lot, you worked a lot as a videographer, or you had like a different kind of job. Um, I was. I was doing a lot of different things on set. Like, you know, when you watch a movie, you see all those credits. All those people have a job on a set. So oh, yeah. I was a bunch of different positions on set, whether it was a videographer, whether, whether if I was an editor or pulling focus or just getting people water. Like, I had, I was just working every single day, constantly, nonstop. But that was just because, like, you know, I wanted people to get to know who I was, get to know my character, get to know what I was able to bring to set and, you know, the creative process of me. But, you know, there's a lot of... There's a lot of people out there in LA that kind of already have their stuff on their pedestal. So, you know, when you come in very brand new and you don't really know much, you kind of like, you really got to work yourself, you'll work, work your way to the top. And, you know, I won't say like I got that far, but I mean, I, I, I made a, I made a good group of friends and I got a good team out there that I know if I go back out there, like, you know, we can work like nothing happens. So. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, amazing. To leave that kind of stuff out there. So you've been doing the thing for the, the videographer for a long time. So have you ever, like, shot with any artists, like, rap music or hip-hop or pop or anybody that we may know or you work anything like that? Yeah. Um, I've done stuff for uh, Annalie Choppa, T. Grizzly, Young Thug, uh, Lil Wayne, Chris Brown. The list goes on and on. I've done, a, I've done a lot of things for a lot of celebrities. And, you know, most people, I feel like, kind of get starstruck. But, like, for me, when I was out there, like, I don't know. I kind of really didn't get that feeling because, I don't know, at the end of the day, I, I view people as, as just human, like, we're all human. So, yeah. for me, when I just seen those type of people, it's just like, these are people that just work really hard at their craft, and that's why they're successful, and that's why, you know, they're put on this pedestal. I think it all just boils down to your hard work. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's awesome. And you know what? I got that feeling from him, too, when I – when he when I was talking to him even on the phone, uh, you know, as we were setting things up for the um, the Mother's Day the dinner and music guy mm-hmm. here in Columbus, and I got it from that same feeling from him and and the photographer that he brought with him. Right. Um, like yeah, shout I out Marquise that, Petty. That's my photographer. Huh? I said shout, shout out Marquise out. Petty. That's that was a that was a photographer on the set. Yeah, Marquise Petty. I'm gonna have to reach out. I know you sent me his number, so I'm gonna have to reach out to him and see if he's interested in coming on. Yeah. But um, yeah. So I really got that feeling. How, how? What did you think about the event? I'm curious. What was your thought? Well, for one, I love the food. The food was great. Um, but I, <laughs> I, for me personally, I love seeing uh, black people come together and you know in a positive environment and you know just just appreciating one another. Um, and I thought the event was amazing. I think the artists were dope. I think you were good. Um, so yeah, it's just always good to see, I think people of color come together and, you know, and just be positive with one another. That makes me feel good. I was like, come on, eat all this food out here. Eat, eat. <laughs> it was all you can eat. But I'm like, eat, take some home. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, was, it really was a good time. And then see, like at at that place that we shot, now where was the um the name of it again? Was just the, uh, the North Bank Park Pavilion here in yeah. Columbus, Ohio. They that was some, beautiful. Some, some nice uh like backgrounds and shots. Have you ever been over there before to shoot anything? 
Uh, no. Um, so I live in Dayton. So I've been to Columbus to shoot a couple of things, but never really like any type of scenery things. Uh, honestly, since I've been back, this is probably the most I've been to Columbus. But um, no, that was my first time ever really okay. shooting anything out there downtown wise. How long have you been back from LA? Uh, in July twelfth will be a year. Okay, so you haven't been gone. You just really came back. So do they have, like, a big yeah. film industry out here in, like, say, Dayton or even Columbus or, or Cincinnati or anything like that? Is there, like, 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 independent films? Is that a thing out here? Compared, compared to your other cities, no. Um, I think it's growing, and I think it can be a lot better. But right now, not really. And that's kind of why, like, I've been on the ups about moving again. I mean, I think Dayton and, you know, this Ohio area is an awesome city, and I think it has a lot of growth. But just as a creative, it's kind of hard to to really eat because, you know, a lot of people really don't – not everybody needs videos, you know. Not everybody needs video services or promos or commercials. So um, I think that that industry will eventually pick up, but right now it's just not everybody's on that wave yet. You're being really nice to Ohio, too. You're being so nice to us. (laughs) I grew up. In, I can't. I can't dog it too much. Right, right. You, you're being very nice to us. Columbus is a very. I don't know about Dayton, but Columbus is a very conservative town. Mm-hmm. Although the arts are picking up here, you know. Um, but in all honesty, people like us, you, Mr. Stout, me, um, Mr. De, uh, D'Angelo, right. like we're almost mis misfits here. Yeah. Because of the creativeness of who we are, you know what I'm saying, and not really being able to be accepted the way that we need to be in this environment because they haven't caught up to that point yet. You would think that they would it would be not just accepted but more like wanted. Like, what can you guys do to help the situation? Like what we were saying about what um uh with uh, Lady Crystal you know, what they were trying to do out there in the neighborhoods, even in L.A., like having people come there. They had the outlets and the facilities. They just didn't have, you know, the people that really like to get involved, you know. So compared to being here to L.A. or even, like, you know, New York or anything like that, Atlanta, you know, people are already doing something all the time. The things that are going on where you can say, oh, I can go check this out and I can go to this. If they had more of those things like that, I think that they would come out. People would come out. Like they had any festivals, like block parties, or that that was dedicated to the arts. I know they do like they do like the free um, fairs and that kind of stuff. They do fairs out here, right? Yeah, but they they only they really gravitate towards known artists, right? You know, not really so not much the, the, to yeah, the, the local independent, the independent yeah. Uh, so, what I mean, be honest, uh, D'Angelo. I I'm start be honest with them. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you think about the growth of the independent artists in the independent movement out here in Ohio? How do you feel? Do you feel like, I mean, uh, there's a lot of of independent artists here, awesome artists. Yeah. But do you feel like, does, does Columbus feel or Ohio feel kind of like clickish to you? Um. No, not necessarily. I feel like, honestly, um, when it comes to, like, artists or even just people who, who kind of have, like, the same calling, like, whether if you're a tattoo artist or a makeup artist, I feel like a lot of times we always try to battle against one another instead of coming together and making stuff, which always kind of puts us far back from everybody that's already doing stuff. Like, I feel like I, I'm always looking for other videographers to shoot with and, you know, and collab with and make a dope project with. But, you know, it's like, I don't know why, but I feel like, whenever it's somebody else and that's doing your same job, it feels like a competition when in retrospect, it really should just be like a collaboration to where it's like, you know, if we eat, if I eat, you eat, we all eat, you know? So I feel like a lot of times what's really holding a lot of artists back and, you know, people are entrepreneurs is that we're always trying to go against each other instead of trying to work together. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. I think that's basically for a lot of industries, but definitely for the arts industry because, um, there's always that because it's levels, right? So if somebody starts to get to somewhere and doing something and that person that was with them, you know, like, you know, they're kind of like, well, they left me, you know what I mean? Without saying, yeah. Like that kind of stuff. Instead of saying, like, make, make it a collaborative group. Like collaborative groups always do better than somebody just, like, you know, just doing it 
alone or have somebody else that's just like kind of like their their friend but not really like trying to work with them and it you know what I mean and I've seen that you know throughout the industry through a lot of different things but if you people who stick together you see the the, the growth and what they're doing you know so that's yeah, something I, I love I that's what I feel that's Columbus yeah they if they would do that they will see they will start to get more mainstream you know when it comes to arts or even artists come out here you know what I mean so it, it, it's definitely on the horizon though. Yeah, I what, agree. What and I feel like, I'm sorry. I agree. Yeah, and I feel like um, a lot of people nowadays is we have to learn how to take constructive criticism as well. Like you know, mm-hmm. not everybody, not the first, not everything you're gonna do is gonna be the best. Not everything you're gonna do is the greatest. Like you have to learn to to put something out and you know learn from each thing you do. Like every video I've done, every single video, I'm like, all right, what could I've done better? Or like I don't want to make the same video twice, or I don't want my work to be where it was last year this year like i want to improve every single time every single day every single year and that comes with constructive criticism i ask my friends all the time like what should i add to this or what should i do different or my mentor in la i'm like hey what can i do better at this and you know it's 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 not personal because they're just they're telling you how to be better and how to 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 be greater and and reach out to more people and, and network and build your brand and that's you know. you're right. You should always um, um, be able to accept um, criticism because it, it, it's not even really criticism. It's just okay. This is what I see from my eyes. Like you know, um, I'm looking at. I'm looking. On, I'm on the outside looking in. So these may be things that you didn't see. You know what I'm saying? That's the, when it goes to a piece of art. When somebody looks at a piece of art, two, two people see it different things on it, right? That's what they say. One you you. One piece of art, two people can see the same thing, you know, especially if it's an abstract piece. When you listen to a song or if you're watching a video, you know, or a movie or a film, like, you're getting the direction of what that videographer storyline is too, right, mm-hmm. included with, with the artist, with the song, or what it may be, the product, the brand, what have you. You know what I mean? So people are always going to have this or that towards it. It's still it's still a piece of something of what it is. So everybody is surrounding it to watch what it is. Is that they collectively say, oh, we like this, or they collectively say we don't like it, or if it's in half or some pieces and bits. But at the, at the end of the day, I think that when it, when it comes to art, that's what it really is. You know what I mean? Because it shouldn't be just the one thing. You know what I mean? Like, we all like Michael Jackson, but somehow we didn't like all the songs. You know what I mean? So it's like whatever. So if you watch a filmmaker or if you're watching, you know, like I said, like a makeup artist or whatever, like, you know, it's different arts. Different people do some different art, graphic arts, you know, editors, like that kind of stuff. People are going to have different opinions of what they think it is, you know, but if it's your interpretation of what you think it is, is going to probably be the one that you really want to go with. You know what I mean? People are going to say, yeah, you should do this, but this was coming from you. You know, so the interpretation is of what you're putting out there. I mean, it's just my thought because I write songs myself, so I'm like abstract with that kind of stuff myself. Like, you know. Well, I know as as dealing with the Atlanta Music Industry Group, and I would definitely encourage you, um, um, D'Angelo, to you know, I I posted your your website in the group. We have like over thirty two thousand members. A lot of them. Are, I, when I look at the analytics, I would say probably I don't know. 40, 50% of them are from Atlanta, and the rest of them are from other different parts of the of world. The world. Of the not, world just, yeah. not just the United and States. And the Ohio music over. industry, too, as well. And Ohio industry is yeah. growing. So I definitely encourage you to um, to join the group and post some of your videos and stuff, you know, um, because I know, I'm telling you right now, you already said yes, so I can just go ahead and reset. it. When I get ready to have Hook of Atlanta... <laughs> This year, I'm coming to get you because last time I had an event, the last two times, my last two experiences with yeah. videographers has yeah. been horrible. Yeah. The first time, the footage was not clear. It wasn't good. Try to go the second feet. time, yeah. I didn't get the footage. So, and, and it, it just, not, neither time worked out well for me as far as the videographers. So I want to work with somebody that I know is a bomb big. Even yeah. if I got to pay for you to get down there. I don't <laughs> I don't care because I want to have some good footage, you know. So I definitely yeah. um, would encourage you to join the group and definitely keep me, like, you already know. I'm telling you, Ed, I just don't know when yet. I haven't figured out when or where um, we're going to do it in Atlanta, but we are going to do it because this is we do it every year. I just yeah. haven't figured out when and where yet. Well, so, whenever, whenever you know, let me know. I'm there. 
Oh, yes, yeah, I need a good videographer, and, and I'm gonna reach out to your photographer too, um, Marquise, and I'm gonna ask him if he's interested. Maybe I could ride down together because he's in the same city. He's in Dayton too. Uh, he's in Cincinnati, but you know, he, he I'm gonna make him come. He ain't got a choice. Oh yeah, I was just oh, in my, Cincinnati. That, that's, I'm, I'm I like serious. Like I already Cincinnati. got my camera people. I have <laughs> my videos for my full time. So are you are you shooting videos for people yeah. out here? As well, like, are you working with people with a budget, or are you just going straight with the the pro things that you're doing? Uh, so I, because Ohio is such a kind of cheaper market, I kind of really work with people's budgets. Um, kind of, you know, <laughs> what else? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Kind of, I don't want to say they stingy. You know, I understand. Everybody got, you know, everybody got bills to pay, so I get. Yeah. It. But um, no, nah, I usually work with with in between people's budgets. I usually have like a video package and like an exclusive package that comes with certain lighting gear and all that stuff. But um I shoot videos locally for a couple of artists and um a couple of people that uh want like promo videos for their businesses and stuff like that. So um and I I've done a couple of weddings here uh recently as well. I I've, I've I've been trying to keep myself busy. I'm also actually going to Chicago tomorrow to shoot a a basketball tournament. I'll be down there for about 4 days. Oh. I was just about to ask you, do you still go? We, I used to live in Chicago. I used to live on West Jackson Boulevard over there um, near, um, what was that, Columbus Park. You know where Columbus Park is off of Central? I, I, I do not. I, Were you I, south uh, side or west side? Where did you grow up at? I'm south side. South side. Oh, okay. So you don't know Carpenter. that. Y'all, y'all yeah, south don't side don't need to go to the west. west to go to the south. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know too much about that side. <laughs> yeah, everybody's scared of everybody. <laughs> okay, well, I used to live on the west side of Chicago. I lived on the south side, too. Um, when I first got to Chicago, I was out there um, near 79th and Yates area. Like, I was out in that area. And then I moved because that was, okay. that, was, that, was, that was a little bit too much for my spirit. So I moved west. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then I was at... Uh, uh, I was at a uh, West Jackson Boulevard in Cicero, and that that was really too much for my spirit. I had to, I was trying to get over there to Oak Park, but you know they funny actors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, so I, I usually I was young, so I stayed in the house a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, your mama wasn't playing them games. <laughs> oh yeah. Nah. <laughs> That's awesome that you. So when are you going out there to? Sh- I mean, like, what are you going to be shooting? I'm shooting a basketball tournament for uh, actually Chris Paul's AAU team. Uh, this is a company I've been working with called Avis. Uh, mm-hmm. They hire me kind of freelance, and I, I go out and, you know, shoot their high school kids playing basketball, sometimes middle school. And, uh, yeah, I'll be out there for a couple of days shooting, relaxing. And um, when I come back, it's the grind again, just shooting some more music videos, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So you definitely, I mean, well, I'm not going to say definitely, because like you said, you, you like dating um, and you like being at home. It's nothing like coming home and seeing your family and friends and reconnecting with people. Like, that is beautiful, awesome, and amazing, you know. But whenever that point hits and you decide, where can I go, I definitely would say one of the, any, any city, any major metropolitan city, you know, like Atlanta is a good one. I'm, we're headed back that way because two of my kids were born there, so that's home for them. You know, Columbus is home for me, but Atlanta is home for them. So I, we'll be making our transition that way. I think another uh, – what's another really good city that, that that has a lot of creative things? New York, New York. of course. Yeah. New York has a lot. LA, I've never been to New York. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely got uh, that art is all over the place. It's it's everywhere. Yeah, it is. It's, it, you know what? In all honesty, when I was in New York, you know what it made me feel like? It made me feel like a mixture of Chicago and Atlanta together. That's yeah, that's what I I it, felt yeah. the creativeness and the and the home feeling of Atlanta, but I felt the fast pace yeah, and the right, and the yeah. and the and the straight you know to the to straight to the point. Straight, yeah. New Yorkers, I can't talk to New Yorkers too long because we get to argue. The straight to the point type of, <laughs> of, of um, like Chicago. Chicago's like that too. But New York is a, it's, a, it's expensive, yeah. you know. But it's not. It can't be any more expensive than LA, you know. Miami. The crazy the thing is, part. I like I like big cities, but I don't like a lot of people. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been trying to find yeah. my middle ground. 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Have fire escapes and rooftops. So you might yeah you might want to go south then to Atlanta because you can you can go way you can be you know you know that song they put out that ain't Atlanta it is Atlanta you can go way out in the suburbs and still be a part of Atlanta. I, look, I've got the conversation for off the air, but I want to talk about that one. Yeah. Just, going through that one right there, like the man, I was just talking. I was just talking to one way there about certain places, names of places, and it was like that may not be Atlanta, but it's just, so. Metropolitan Atlanta is it's basically anything that's around the two eighty five. If it doesn't you know, say Atlanta on a mail, then No, that's not the, that's not the, <laughs> not the case. That's not the case. That's no, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Park this doesn't that. say Atlanta, but it's still College Park. You know what I'm saying? Forest Park, College Park. Clayton County is Atlanta. It's Metro Atlanta. It's the sub it's the south suburbs, you know. Alpharetta is still Atlanta. It's the north North suburbs, but it's still Atlanta. Like we still claim them. I don't know why that girl got talking about that ain't Atlanta. Yes, it is. Buckhead, Atlanta. Bankhead, Buckhead. Buckhead is Atlanta. Buckhead is right downtown. Yeah. I don't so. know too much about Atlanta. I lived in Atlanta for about six months when I was like maybe ten. I got a friend that lives out in Atlanta right now. He's a producer. His name is Eli. He goes by Vision. Uh, he likes it out there. He's been trying to get me to move out there as well. Oh no, I just feel like Atlanta might be a little too. You, much you'll fit in. You'll you'll always you'll make money. If if nobody else gets paid, the people who are working behind the scenes get paid. You know what I'm saying? They, the, the, the videographers, the photographers, y'all get paid. You know the singers. We we praying. We we are. That's why I started the indie revolution. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that church is available now, too. <laughs> I'm working on the church, church now. We got to stick together, like you said. We got to stick together. We got to change things on how artists are paid because we're not, you know, they, they stream our music, they play our music, and they, they give us like a penny, you know. So I'm really trying to uh, be one of the pioneers to change that. But as far as, you know, the filmmaker, you know, the videographers and stuff, y'all make y'all get paid because y'all, y'all ain't showing up to the scene without a paycheck. <laughs> Oh yeah, we yeah we 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 don't play about our money. If we if the that if that deposit ain't in, we ain't coming. Not right. sure enough. So I I are are you available for hire if somebody like wanted to you know bring you to their city, state, whatever? Like, are you available? I travel all over the country, all fifty states. Uh, if you let me know a week in advance, we can make something happen. Wow, so that's good stuff. So how would they need to get in touch with you? Like, what is your best contact information? Um, probably my Instagram. Uh, I have a business Instagram at chosen underscore global. Uh, you can follow that page. You can DM us, and somebody will definitely reach out to you ASAP. Uh, and this message for rates and, and all those things. And we work, like I said, we work with any type of budget, whether if you need a videographer, a photographer, if you need interviews, commercials, weddings, we do it all. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually looking for, a couple people that I'm working with right now is actually looking for some, um, like, a, like little 30 second spots with advertising right now. We definitely will be, um, you know, be in touch with you about that as well. I think this is the thing right here. Look, this is what you drink right there. Yeah. I got those bags for that. So I, um, I, I, I'm excited um, to meet you. I, I, it's been a while. We, me and Mr. Scott have actually taken a taken a break, took a break for a little while. Um, but we're planning on relocating sometime this year back to Atlanta. We're actually making our plans. And when we do, our goal is to actually do more of our interviews in person. You know, we've been doing them on Block Talk Radio um, for the last, what, two Three years, mm-hmm. ever since 2020 or 2019, yeah. I started. I started the uh, well. I've, I've had the the blog talk radio for a long time, but you know, podcasts became very important during the pandemic. Right. And I had actually started right before the pandemic. But we're going to go back to in person, in studio um, interviews once we move back to Atlanta. And definitely, we will want to have videographers. So if you are, or if you know of of um, any videographers who are, you know, um, reliable, dependable, trustworthy, and have good stuff. Like, the, the people for Hook of Atlanta, I'm sorry to put you out there now because it's been a couple of years. <laughs> 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 that 
with some doo-doo footage. <laughs> and you know, it's like they charge me all this money, and they had this big machine in the middle of the daggone floor to shoot me out some doo-doo footage. <laughs> <laughs> Are oh, you talking about 20, 2021? 20, 20, 20, 20, yes, yeah. you know, he said with all the, it was like a spaceship. <laughs> oh, no. He had like Star Trek in the middle floor and spit out doo doo footage. Huh? Yeah, and he couldn't even go live, like live. The live yeah, it was horrible. Well. Charged me all that money for that. It's it just like. satellite, man, and you tore it up for streaming. So I'm definitely trying to build a team when I get back to Atlanta. So if if you are available or if you know people that are connected who have really good people, like I'm really looking to um, build uh, a, a really strong, solid team in Atlanta, not just, you know, for videography and for events, but just to really promote these independent artists because there are so many of them. And we really need to start our own network. We are so dependent on the masses and mainstream and stuff, but we really should c- create our own eco. Is that called an ecosystem? Did I say it right? Ecosystem, yeah. I said it right. You surprised I said that thing. <laughs> we really should create that because do you know there are millions of independent artists alone? I'm not even talking about how many of y'all videographers and photographers there are, but there are millions and millions and millions of independent artists, and all of them have at least a dollar. <laughs> Most of them got a job. The, the money that we could combine within our own would be tremendous. If we stuck together, like how you were saying, how um, here in Ohio we need to stick together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's facts. I was just talking to um, I was just talking to one of my uh, one of my mentors that I was uh, that I learned from coming out of high school, and we were just talking about like, man, once a month we just need to shoot something. It don't matter what it is, it don't matter how much money we put into it. We just got to shoot something, and we just got to do that once a month and just just keep creating, and keep creating, and keep creating. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I did a movie when I was in Atlanta. I, one of my books. Um, I actually went to the Art Institute of Atlanta. Do you remember the Art Institute of Atlanta? Have you heard of it before? No, I have not. I haven't heard of it. Okay, so they had something called the Art Institute of Atlanta, and that's where I started, kind of like learning a little bit about, um, you know, how to shoot film and videographies and storyboards and all that kind of stuff. So have you had an opportunity to do any, like, short films or or um, any m- movie scenes or anything like that? Uh, so when I was in L.A., I worked on a docu-series uh, for Hulu called Death in the Dorm. So that was the first time I ever worked on uh, a documentary. Um, I, I made my own short film not too long ago, about a month ago. Um, I started a short film series called Wordplay. It's only one episode out right now, so I'm, I'm in the mix of working on that. I'm just a, I'm a perfectionist, so if it's not the way I want it, I ain't gonna shoot it. But mm-hmm. I'm in the mix of still, um, I'm, just, I'm in the mix of still making that happen. Uh, but I've done a bunch of dialogue stuff in LA. I've done some TV shows. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the word, I mean, not the word. Ever heard of the reality TV show called Bell Collective? Uh, it's on the own Open Winfrey Network. Network uh, channel. I worked on that, and then another another reality show called Ready to Love that was also on that uh, network. So that's the closest I've got to like a movie. I'm, I've always wanted to do a movie, but I've never never got to that point yet. Well, okay. It sounds like you was home for the Atlanta when you hit the ground. That was like, hey, we need to work over here. Hey, we need to <laughs> bring out ready. Hey, come on over here. Hey. <laughs> I was I was Is everywhere. I, I was like, look, if you need me, I'm there. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. So, um, yeah, the thing about movies, though, when you're filming movies, um, they'll do, like, they can do, like, 12 scenes, you know, mm-hmm. in one day or, you know, or three or four. But it takes a lot, like, the, the the amount of time you're on set is hours. Yeah. You know, yeah. a long time. And, and maybe not 12 scenes. That might be over going overboard because there's so many different shots. That you can take from one scene. You right. Know? If you're not in, you got to be dealing with light. If you're doing something outside or if you're inside, you got to be. Not not just that, but yeah. close up, you know, yeah. wide shot. Right. Yeah. All from that same. A normal scene day in LA for me was uh, waking up at 6 a.m., uh, getting ready to prep gear, uh, leave for set at 8 a.m. Had to be there at 10. And I lived in the city, so we had to drive out of the city, which is about like maybe 30 minutes unload gear, probably shoot, 
probably first shots up at noon, and then we wouldn't wrap until maybe around like 10, and then you have to pack all that gear out. You're not getting home until maybe 2 a.m., and then you're right up yeah. back at it again the next day. Yeah. That's the life of a videographer, for sure. Yeah. And you was doing that a lot. Like, you was getting booked a lot. You was making the money. That's for darn sure. There were days where it was, there were days where it was, it was, the, the checks was coming. But then there'd be some months where it was like, hey, when am I going to get another job? Because it was just, it was kind of like that. If you weren't really super plugged in, there were either days you'd be eating and there'd be days where it's like, I got to put some noodles in the in the microwave. We got to eat these noodles for a couple of weeks and we'll see what it do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. So what, so what kind of, um, well, first tell us your social media handles, you know, how people, once again, how people can reach out to you, how they can check you out, all that kind of stuff. And then I, what kind of advice, would you give to someone who wants to get into filmmaking, become a videographer, and they're interested in moving to a new town that they've never worked in? But first, tell us your, um, give us your, you know, all your contact information. Okay. Um, my Instagram is chosen by D-Lo. Uh, my business page is chosen underscore global. Chosen Global is our brand. It's where we do all videography and photography. And then um, to answer your question, my advice. Um, well, hold on for a second. I'm, Wait a minute. Hold oh, on, because we got the slow people, the slower ones that was born <laughs> in the 60s and 50s may not have got that. So can you repeat that okay. again? Because you said that real fast. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> my Instagram, my personal Instagram is chosen by Dilo. That's C H O S N B Y D E L O. And then my uh, business page is chosen underscore global. Uh, chosen underscore yeah. global, you'll find most of our videos and photography. Okay, spell the chosen part again. Okay, C H O S E N B Y D E L O, chosen by D Lo. And then the business page is chosen, C H O S E N underscore G L O B A L, chosen global, chosen underscore global. There we go. All right, now, now you can see. <laughs> What? I didn't get it. Okay. I get it. But, uh, so, um, my advice yeah. for yeah. a creative moving or wanting to get into the industry is honestly just um, don't be scared. I feel like before I had moved to LA, I was so nervous and I didn't know a lot and I was just trying to really just get my feet wet. But once I was out there, it was kind of just kind of just going with the motion. So you kind of just have to take risks. I'm a big risk taker, and I believe that a lot of risks pay off. I mean, you only get, you only live once, so you know, might as well take those calculated risks and and just see where it goes, because you just never know where it can land you. Like I didn't like, I like I said, I wasn't starstruck, but the probably most starstruck I've ever been was, uh, this is crazy because it was like a week before my birthday. Um, I had me and my uh, mentor got a call, and they want us to shoot uh, P Diddy's son's birthday party. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, like, okay, cool, whatever. We show up to this huge mansion. And when I tell you, like, every celebrity that you could know was there, every celebrity you could know was there. And I'm just like, man. And, like, I had to really sit with myself and realize, like, man, I'm really around these people. Like, a lot of people that look up to these people, that follow these people, that want to be like these people are in this very room with me. And, like, for me, it just felt like I'm supposed to be here like because I'm on that level. You know, I might not – my net worth might not say that, but, you know, I'm on that level as as what they are. And so you really just got to, like I said, you just got to take calculated risk and just believe in yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, That's awesome. Great, yeah. Amazing. So I got a question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. You, you said you got Diddy's party? <laughs> oh. Hey, look. You, you I wasn't so there. He, 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 he Diddy wasn't there. P. Diddy was not there. He was not there. He was in Miami at the, at the time, but it was for his son. So oh, okay. I, I've never been to a PBD, I've never been to a PBD party. I don't know. I can't confirm or deny any of those <laughs> other rumors about his party. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> you said that's all I'm gonna say. I ain't gonna say nothing else about it. You know, we've been hearing about a little bit about P. Diddy. We don't know what's going on. I'm, like, I'm, I'm still trying. I'm still trying to get hired by P. Diddy. Listen, I'm trying to put me on the bad side. <laughs> That's what's up. Well, you know what? It's awesome 
that you're able to be in that crowd and you're not, like you said, you're not starstruck. Like it doesn't bother, like it's no big thing. Like you and I breathe. We are, like we're all, in your mind, it's like we're we're all human beings. We're just doing our thing. Like I feel like I belong here. Like that's awesome because some people don't see it like that. You know, they get, they get nervous or they can't even think about being in that kind of environment. But, you know, when you're a professional, you're a professional. You know what I'm saying? And so that's awesome and amazing. I definitely love the video that you shot. I love um, how you knew how to do those close-ups, like um, on DJ Wise's uh, uh, laptop, the way you were able to capture, like you knew to capture that picture, or the way you captured, you know, the different ornaments on the table, you captured the food. Like It's like you knew the key things to capture to make sure you had that for editing. And so I, I'm like, okay, he, he know what he's doing. Yeah, my biggest thing when I go through my um, video and editing process is to is to make sure that the people that are watching it feel like that they're there or that they missed out kind of thing. So it's like I try to get every piece of thing and put it together in a, in a, in a good way to where it just it, it meshes so well. And because I, I know when I watch videos or I watch a movie, um, I'm just looking to, to feel like, man, I can really see this happening in real life or I, I feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm living this with them. So whenever I shoot a video, I try to I try to get that same type of feeling. Mm. That's awesome, amazing. Yeah, so I definitely will be um, back in touch with you uh, once we schedule when Hook of Atlanta is going to be. We just have not yet. I haven't I haven't um, locked in a date or where I wanted to be at yet, but I do plan on doing that. And when I do, I definitely want I don't want a repeat of what I went through the last two years. So I definitely want a good videographer and a good photographer. And I definitely will reach out to um, your partner and see if he's available, Marquise, and see if he's available for an interview. And hopefully when I'm ready to do this or we can lock it, lock it in where you will, both of you will be available. You know what I'm saying? Like I can include you all in the planning because so, I already know I want to have my own. I don't want to go through what I went through um, the last time. Like I don't want to, I don't want to experience that. And, and and for me, in all honesty, the best editor, in all honesty, is the the videographer, because you are capturing everything, and you know what you captured, and you know what you're doing, and you know the the whole you know thing that's going on. So when you get ready to edit, it's like you know how to put it together. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Usually, most videographers, at least I know. When you shoot, you're already thinking about your edit. So, like, whenever I was shooting, I'm already thinking, like, all right, I'm going to put this first. This going to go last. It's going to go this way. So we're kind of already editing as we're shooting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, that's not – I definitely – even though I know how to edit, I definitely wanted you to, you know, to, to do it. So I thank you so very much for – um you know, for stopping by, for taking the time to allow me to interview you and to share you – with and your expertise with my listeners, and being the first guest um, that we brought back on um, for this new season, because we literally have been off the air pro- probably for about two two months maybe, and so you're my first guest coming back, and I just want to really start interviewing not just the artists but also the ones who are behind the scenes because they're important. You know, if you don't have a good person behind the scenes that's getting making sure everything together, uh, you know, your your shots are good and, and and your sound is good and all that kind of stuff is good, then your finished product won't be the best. You understand what I'm saying? So I feel like it's important to start showcasing our, you know, the people that are behind the scenes. You are very important. So, um, yeah, I wanted to bring you on and um, just tell you thank you. I appreciate you okay. for coming from Dayton um, and, and your partner from Cincinnati to come to my event. You know, it was my first time having a, an event that big in Columbus, and I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. Because yeah, I thought it turned out good, though. It really did. We ended up getting a grant from the Greater Columbus Arts Council because mm-hmm. um, they support independent artists. We do have some stuff. They trying. Right. You know, they thought. trying. Um <laughs> Uh, so I'm just happy that we were able to have y'all there, and y'all did an excellent job. Yeah, the video is out yeah. there too, so we, we can see some of it. The work that you did from uh, the, the 
the dinner gala for the Mother's Day dinner and gala. Yeah, it's on my YouTube channel. Right. It's on Facebook. I've shared just about everywhere, um, underground and overground. And yeah, underground. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> you follow, <laughs> you follow on the move or ATW. yeah, you can see it on my Instagram. If you go to at Patricia Marie Goins, you can see it on my Twitter. You know, at Patricia M Goins, you can see it on Facebook. You can see it in the Atlanta Music Energy Group. You can see it on my YouTube. Um, Miss Goins 1119. You can see it everywhere. Like, I really shared it because I really felt, not only because I was proud of it, because, you know, the food was good, you know, the, um, 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 what was his name? The kitchen. Um, oh, the kitchen. Oh, yeah. That was Chef Design. Chef. Uh, what? Designer Chef. Yeah. <laughs> Designer Chef was the Bob Diggity. Um, DJ, was DJ Wise then? DJ Wise was awesome to make. Like it was, it was an awesome thing. So I, I like to share that kind of stuff. And also, it's good for when people are trying to decide who they're going to hire. They want to see what you have done. You know what I'm saying? What events have you done? What this, that, and the other. So um, hopefully you'll be able to use. If somebody ever comes to you, um, D'Angelo, and says, "Let me see what you've done," you'll be able to point them to you know, my page or my video and say, you know, I did this, I did this, you know, I was a videographer and, you know, I did some editing on it or whatever, like, definitely, because it was, yeah, a, it was great. Sure. It, and I yeah. actually wanted two cancer patients to come and I couldn't find anyone to just come before the event because I was going to give them free tickets. But how it ended up is two cancer patients ended up yeah. coming anyway. Yes, they were. And they introduced themselves to me. Right. So God worked that out without me, you know, so, um, yeah. There's any more to come. There are more things. Man. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Any shout outs? Any thank yous and uh, appreciate you? Shout out to no? my shout out to my Ohio family. Shout out to my Chicago family. And um shout out to all the creators out there. Just keep chasing your dream. Oh, hold on, at the end and we also, got a call. Call the way to the end. Oh, hold man. on, Colin. You got a call and it's called up on the move <laughs> unscripted. Hello, caller. You have 662 in your number. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Fabian McDonald from Peoria, Illinois. Hey, how you doing there? How you doing there? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for calling in. Do you have something you would like to say to Mr. D'Angelo? Yes, I just called to tell him he is a true inspiration um, to all the young men and women out here trying to move forward in the um, industry, and I just want to encourage him to keep keep pushing on. Yeah, that's nice. Thank awesome. you. Man. Thank you, Xavier. That's actually my sister, I- y'all. That's your sister? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, that's look, my little brother. Family family. Hey, support that. That's, that's right. right. You got to have that support. With, especially it feels good when it comes to family, your friends and stuff like that. You know, you get it for your colleagues and stuff, but your family, yeah, that's, that's the stuff. Yeah, that's the bottom. Let me tell you something. Half the family don't ha- want to support nothing that somebody else got going on that they ain't doing it. So the fact that you have a, a family member who says, let me show him support. Mm-hmm. Let him show. Let me show him that I love him and I got his back. Let me call yes. him in and let him know he's an inspiration. That is the bomb. I'm Kudos. Gonna... I wish we had some clap. We could clap. <laughs> 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 People will listen, they will follow you, they will watch you, they will do all that stuff, but they won't ever congratulate you. They won't say you was an inspiration to me. They yeah, won't say thank you, but they'll follow you, girl. they'll look at you, they'll watch you, they'll try to copy you. They... <laughs> <laughs> you better go on your rants right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I take a break. That's why I take a break. <laughs> That's why I take a break. But anyway, we appreciate you. Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am, for calling in. Thank you. Oh, yeah. There it is. Thank you, D'Angelo. So we're going to um, play some music, and then we're going to slide on out of here. Oh, but yeah. I just want to say thank you to everyone who listened to us, who continues to listen to us. Yeah. Y'all, don't pay me no mind. Y'all know I'm unscripted, so I say what I want to say, how I want to say it. You know, this is raw, uncut, unfiltered, uncensored. What's all them yeah, new tags? The they been using. That, uh, they been taking Yeah, they just stole all my tags, man. <laughs> They got a whole radio station that's called Uncut right now. I'm like, oh, man. I was surprised. And it is well, pretty thank good, y'all, too. Thank y'all for having me and bringing me on. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Thanks for calling up. Yeah, we appreciate you. And, cool. and, and until next time, y'all, peace and love. Peace and love, y'all. Peace and love. Peace and love. All right. Turn up.
They tryna figure out why you got me on top Oh no, no, that ain't your business Okay, you got my attention My eyes are back on the mission And baby, you just look so good to me So what you wanna do? I got enough energy for the song too You love the way you ride and I love the way you move Baby, where we go is really up to you But I'ma keep it on Mary, Mary, make them touch their toes. I don't speak a lot with my and we picking up the load. I seen 
your bump his nose. They was hitting it off the plate. I'm in the trap poster with her. They can't even feel their face. It's your funerals and court dates, and no, I'm not okay. I might just come pick up your bay and take her face and spray. You know me, I skip the foreplay. She suck it till it's dry. She gon' clean the whole bone. She think I'm Kentucky Fried. She said, Ferrari, I love you, babe. You know that I can't lie. And if this I build a legacy, you know that I can't die. That I can't die. Yeah. It's a legacy. You know that I can't die. Man, you niggas act like I'm feeling it. I know that they won't ride. Where is Wild Loon? Scorp Entertainment.
suit taken literal You in the shadows of carbon copies Original pieces y'all try to copy So how can you fault me for being cocky I wrap rope around fast throats With every rap rope, even the wax quotes And every word spoke will get your tongue choked I hit a fucking note and all the pierce poke Jealousy, jealousy, hell is you telling me Sat my back and let y'all get ahead of me Now I'm in drive hundred more on that 70 Got into school and became a more better me Lost some more Bellamy, I feel like John Bellamy Seems like attention just came with the recipe How can I wait or be back that you tripping I'm pushing the Mustang GT V8 engine I'm out for revenge to avenge all my friends One got killed, one got time for some TPA ain't did it You just think I'm aggressive for nothing This on my back, why the fuck when I'm fronting I promise you, boom, boom. I do this don't know cause no one's reliable Don't get attached cause everyone's recyclable Envy and hearts cause it's me that they writing to uh, Calling my phone, you ain't getting no answer Hell out my car, yeah, I ain't got no manners I make the calls when we switching the plan up Low key as so I don't do no cameras All the calls for all, all the Mars All the cars in the studio, park, garage, park And lot get packed for the stars that line hard to find Not at all, here I am, hi I've been leaning on the smoking my face Don't know one could do it like 
like you Not everything better with you This unexpected kind of love Must be sent from up above Just hold me And don't let go of me, love Can you write this just there in the mind? Give you the ones over and over again tonight I think the figures and figure it out You were the one who was right Cause you keep it 100 Can you keep it 100? So look in your eyes just there in your mind Give you the ones over and over again the figures and figure it out you were the one who was right Cause you keep it 100 Can you keep it 100 Can you keep it 100 For me Can you keep it 100 Degrees You were so flying I know Everybody good at something Cause I remember days I really thought that I was nothing But I know I want it I hope that you want it Ain't no reason for running Sometimes people can't really explain the stuff they done They never crazy You go in my head, you feel really wrong Stop But I know I know I know you got your heart broke And sometimes like I'm breaking down what you got Keep on going till tomorrow Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah
up. You insisted on being mediocre. Everyday fuck ups. Y'all panic. Yes, we pivot. Then we ownership. Y'all business is no giving. It. We channel it. Don't want to take your bitch shit. Coward ass coyote. Pull up stores. Leave his cops running. While another nigga watching you. Pull out road running. Unbelievable with that. Too stressed to be blessed. Lose a tight on your chest. Child blessed. No mess when you on stupid, stupid, stupid. For those who got cold, cold. y'all doing y'all thing, y'all know. Mixed it possible, I suppose. Time crews keeping it lit. Frank Lucas making legit. If the road wouldn't buff it, Johnson, then we all would be. Stretch a cloudy, memory cloudy, judge and rate. Charles can even see that. Now carry smashing cheeks. Unprotected and having regrets. Yeah. Solidify your ignorance. Yeah. Thinking that you getting back to reality. Dumbing down your inner sense. Innocence. Reflections of a fatherless connection. Yeah.
much more time they need I know what I did was wrong But I'm so used to being the one that's her first But now that I know that your love is real I thought you trust at the same damn time
yourself, you ain't gon' rap on yourself. Respect you earn, the crown you own. Just tell it how it is and how you feel on every side. Ain't no love in these streets. Let that be a lesson learned. Why you feeling by your lonely? Trying to bless you that you love earn. in these streets.
time to do it again. Yeah. The real estate.
just stack them in the closet. I ain't here to show my profit. I'm just here to raise the topic. Jesus Christ, my only option. Bigger checks me bigger offers. Could never pay back what it cost them. I just go in because I know he's awesome. I'm in good hands like he's all state. I'm in the game like I'm all state. To see me go up, they cannot wait. I cannot take chances, so the chances are they gon' take a loss. My testimony's made of hard lessons, I'm in Arbor's presence, this is his message. I'm a living weapon, he the living word by the Holy Spirit, I done been in murder. I done been in business, I done been in fur. She ain't been in nothing till you in a hearse, I'm going in. This is what I'm supposed to do. Hey. Check out my mode. Check out my mode. This how you supposed to do. Hey. Watch how you move. 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 Hey. I'm going in. Check out my move, check out my move. This how you supposed to do. Hey, watch how you move, 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 Emmy. Riffin beat the tracker for your boy. Hey, I put in work like a chore. He cancelled my sin like a void. Favor falling, can't ignore it. I'm getting chips like a drawer. Sauce dripping out my paws. But I'ma need us something more. That major key that's from the sauce. I ain't looking for awards. I'm just working for the Lord. I just got them balls shopping double edged swords that'll leave you battle scar. Fighting battles that ain't even ours. We ain't even under even odds. I only move by the cloud of fire. Y'all been misled by a falling lie. Holy Ghost is my supply. Holy smoke, I'm off the wire. I go from one to a thou. Blessings on me, keep that coke and a smile. Ay, I've been down, it's been a while though. Since they heard me spit this pyro. The flow polar, call it cryo. When he coming back, only God knows. I'ma stay low till he say so. And move this word by the case slow. I'm upholding my cheat code. Y'all observing me in beast mode. I'm plus one, that's a free throw. Y'all can see the his C no. I'ma walk out to him, catch a boat, and I'ma sleep sound, but y'all stay woke. I'm going in. This is what I'm supposed to do. Hey, check out my move. Check out my move. This how you supposed to do. Hey, watch how you move. 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 Amen. Hey, I'm going in. This how I'm supposed to do. Hey, check out my move. Check out my move. This how you supposed to do. Hey, watch how you move.